At Health Education England, we exist to support the delivery of high-quality healthcare, including oral healthcare. We make sure that our healthcare system has the right number of the right people with the right skills, values and behaviours to treat patients in good time and in the right place. We are looking into reforming dental education and training so that it can provide the workforce required by patients for the next 30 years. Over the last few decades, oral health in England has improved. Even though the population is ageing and in some parts of the UK there are vulnerable people being left behind. This upward trend is likely to continue because more people are keeping their teeth for longer, commonplace dentistry like dealing with dentures will be rarer and difficult procedures working on heavily restored teeth will become more common. Having to perform these procedures on patients with a number of age-related health conditions and those taking a mix of medications will make them even more complex. Our future patients will require a range of care pathways and want treatment that is personalised to them and their needs. To meet this demand, the quality and quantity of treatment will need to increase whilst at the same time maintaining value for money for the taxpayer. Getting the best use out of the skill set of the professionals at each level will be crucial. We must make better use of multidisciplinary teams and the wider healthcare workforce. Many dental care professionals are qualified to perform a lot of the tasks that are routinely taken on by a dentist. Work that could free dentists up to perform the more complex and personalised tasks that are becoming increasingly common. We believe that to help fix this problem, what we need is a fresh approach when it comes to education and training. Currently, the training and education pathways for a career in dentistry follow traditional routes to qualification. Post-foundation dentists have the opportunity to enter general dental practice or to undertake programs of core training and then choose from one of 13 different specialties. Our aim is to introduce greater flexibility into this system for the trainee. This will allow us, as Health Education England, to respond more effectively to the demand for quality of workforce within the dental community. One solution might be a common entry to shared undergraduate courses, one with opportunities to advance learning for different roles based upon projected demand for those roles and the competence of the individual. Another might be to introduce modular courses leading to specific skill sets, which would allow trainees to take breaks in their education, keep the qualifications they have gained and put their skills to work where they are needed most. Then, once they or their workforce is ready for them to progress, they could step back into training again. This is what our current review is looking at, but these ideas alone may not be the chosen solution. Over the coming months, we will be examining a number of options to find the one that brings us closest to our stated goal, and we want to hear your ideas and what you think. What we see is a future where learning is part of a flexible lifelong journey of opportunity. Where in the workplace, each part of the team is making the best use of their particular skill set and where everyone in England can expect to be provided with high quality oral health care for years to come. To get involved or to keep up to date with our work, visit the Health Education England website.